Finance Minister Varoufakis, you met uh, the Germans' Mr. Austerity in person today. There were quite a few friendly words, but it didn't sound like you found a lot of common ground. It's quite natural. It was the, the very first meeting. It was an exploratory meeting. It was important to establish uh, a good human communication and also to establish a common ground when it comes to our committed Europeanism. This is not a bad way of beginning. To start by uh, agreeing that uh, even though we may not agree now, we must agree for the in, in the interests of Europe. Finance Minister Schäuble was quite blunt about the fact that he is skeptical that a number of the measures that you announced last week will, in fact, put Greece on the right path. In fact, he expressed uh, the idea that it could well be the wrong path. With all due respect to the, uh, the Finance Minister Schäuble, he hasn't heard yet our proposals because we haven't tabled them uh, at the Greek Parliament. What he has heard is a recapitulation of our electoral campaign. But as you know, when a coalition government is formed, uh, the actual platform, policy platform, uh, evolves. And I would very much like to ask our German uh, friends and partners and all our partners in Europe to wait and see what our actual government policy plans are and then to pass judgment. I understood him to have been referring to measures like rehiring public sector workers, stopping privatization. Those seem to be measures that he questions. Well, I question them too if they are put bluntly to me in this way. Uh, let me give you an example of the rehiring of workers that uh, we have referred to. Uh, are, do you know that public schools in Greece now have no one guarding them at night because the previous government, in its wisdom, has dismissed the school night's watchmen and women? Uh, this is a false saving because we may save on salaries, very low salaries of these people. But then in the middle of the night, the schools get vandalized. Uh, you, you mentioned privatization. We haven't stopped privatization. Uh, but our views on privatization are, are going to be tabled. We are not dogmatic. We're going to take each privatization on its own merits. So when it comes to the Port Authority of Piraeus, when it comes to railways, we will take a very positive view wherever there is an infusion of foreign direct investment that enhances competitiveness. But when it comes to fire sales of national lotteries and other assets which are highly undervalued and which are sold at a, at a pittance, and then this pittance is thrown into a black hole of unsustainable debt, we'll be very skeptical about that. But I, I trust in the powers of persuasion. When, when our uh, partners listen to what we are actually doing, as opposed to what journalists are saying that we're doing, then uh, I'm sure there will be common ground. Your government has signaled Greece's willingness to talk, but if we look at the response of the European Central Bank on Wednesday, it looks like Greece's partners are not convinced about the actions you're prepared to take. Well, you see, the, 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 the ECB is our central bank. It's a central bank of every Eurozone member state. We respect its independence, but independence cuts both ways. We do not meddle with the central bank's monetary policy. The central bank doesn't meddle with our policies uh, at the fiscal level and at the level of uh, structural reforms. We are interested in pursuing structural reforms to the full and to actually make them work in a way that they haven't worked so far. What the ECB has done is to put pressure on both us and our partners to come up with a new program. The ECB needs a program to carry on financing countries like Greece. We must endeavor as politicians to provide them with one. You have made an awful lot of demands in terms of what you would like to see Greece's partners and creditors do. What are you offering? I can't believe that I have made a single demand. All we're asking for is a little bit of time during which a freshly elected government can table its proposals regarding the Greek crisis to them. We don't even expect them to agree with our proposals. The one thing we're asking for is for the opportunity to discuss them with us. Other members of your government, the defense minister, uh, have used some pretty harsh confrontational rhetoric when it comes to Germany. The defense minister referred to example uh, for, to Germany wanting to establish a fourth Reich. On the other hand, you've said you would like to see Germany behave as a hegemonic power. That sounds like a paradox. Well, this is what happens when you have uh, democratic mandates that impose upon political parties' coalitions. 
You have one in this country, in Germany, you have a coalition between the Christ Christian Democrats and the Social Democrats. They don't see eye to eye on everything, and yet they have to speak uh, uh, commonly. This is what our predicament here is too. Regarding my position on Germany, let's face it. Germany is the powertrain economy of Europe. There can be no successful Eurozone without Germany playing a very significant role. In my article that you are referring to, I was making a distinction between a hegemonic presence, leadership, and an authoritarian one. The United States stabilized Europe and put it on a path of growth and prosperity by being hegemonic in the early 1950s, which included, as you know, a debt conference, it included the Marshall Plan. I think this is what Europe needs. And if this has to be done under some kind of Merkel plan, uh, so be it. It would be fantastic if we move in that direction as opposed to the direction of confrontation. A Merkel plan is a kind of Marshall plan. For now, though, you uh, are running out of money. Uh, how much time do you have? Uh, when did the clock run out? I'm not going to speculate on clocks running out. I'm not going to indulge in the, um, uh, in the art of uh, spreading fear. We are here to seek common ground with our partners. And the only thing we're asking for is a short space of time during which to deliberate, as Europeans should deliberate in this magnificent construct of ours, the European Union. Mr. Varoufakis, you have one of the hardest jobs in the world right now. Why in the world did you want it? You had a great job as professor. Why would you give that up? I have no idea. Finance Minister Varoufakis, thank you very much for being with us on DW.